Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well, and in this video I'm going to show you all a few useful functions related to times and dates using the time module in Python, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alright everybody, so the time module. Let's begin by importing time, and the first thing that I'm going to explain to you all is how we can find our computer's epoch, also pronounced as epoch. So this is a date and time in which your computer thinks time began. Think of it that way at least. So we use our epoch as a reference point. So to find your computer's epoch, it's going to vary based on your computer and your operating system. So to find your computer's epoch, type time.ctime, and as an argument, we will pass in zero. Now what this method will do is that this method will convert a time expressed in seconds and convert it to a readable string. So if I was to pass in zero and print it, well then this will display the date and time, which is my epic, our reference point. So for me, my epic is Wednesday, December 31st, 6 p.m., 1969. So I've just added a note that the C time method will convert a time expressed in seconds since epic and convert it to a readable string, a readable date and time. So for practice, let's pass in perhaps 1 million seconds and see what date and time that we receive. So our C time method will return a date and time 1 million seconds past this epic here. So that would be for me, Monday, January 12th, about 7 a.m. 1970. Our next method is the time method of the time module. Let's print time dot time method. And what this method will do is return the current seconds that have passed since our epic using our computer's clock. So the number that I end up with is just over 1.6 billion, and this is in seconds. So for me, 1.6 billion seconds has passed since that date, which is my epic. I believe it was December 31st, 1969. And every time that I rerun this program, you can see that the amount of seconds that has passed is actually increasing. So that is the time method. It will return the current seconds since your epic using your computer's clock. And you know what? Just for fun, let's change the date and time on our clock and see what happens. So let's change the year to... How about the year 2000? Change and close. So let's see what number we get with the time method now. So we get just under 1 billion, 948 million seconds have passed. And now if you need to retrieve the current date and time, well, there's one of a few ways in which you could retrieve that. But one way is that we can combine both of these methods of the C time method and the time method of the time module. So let's print time dot C time. And we're going to pass in an amount of seconds into the C time method as an argument. So within the C time method, we're going to call the time method. So the time method will return an amount of seconds since our epic, and the C time method will convert that amount of seconds to a readable date and time. So the current date and time is Saturday, January 23rd, about 3 p.m., 2021. Now there is more than one way to get the current date and time. Another way is to use the local time method and the local time method will create a time object based on the current time. So what I'm going to do is create a variable called time object and I just need to explain a few things about time objects. So to best explain this, I'm going to print our time object. Now a time object is also referred to as a struct time object. It is made up of different keyword arguments. There's a year, a month, day, hour, minutes, seconds, day of the week, day of the year, and this keyword argument here has something to do with daylight savings time. So there's quite a few uses with time objects, and one way is that we can format them however we want, because right now, this time object is not in a readable format. So to convert this time object into a readable string, we'll need the help of a separate function, and that is the strf time function. str is short for string, f for format, and time, well, for time, I guess. So this function needs two arguments, a format and a time object. 
So our strf time function will accept a format and a time object as an argument. So our format is really just a string of different directives. And to best explain these, I'm going to head to Python's official documentation on this subject. So here I am on Python's website regarding the time module and underneath this section on the strf time function, there are different directives that we can embed within our format string that we pass in as an argument. Depending on the directive that we add, we can display a certain format of our date and time. So for example, if I was to pass in, let's say percent lowercase a, then we will display the time objects weekday name. And you're not limited to just one directive, you can add any combination of directives. So if I was to add percent m, well, we would display the month of our date time object as a number one through 12. So there's a bunch of directives here and I'm going to be using some of these. So within a string for the format argument, I'm going to pass in percent capital B for the name of the month, percent D for the day, percent Y for the year, percent H for the hour. And to format this, I'm going to add a colon to separate hours and minutes, percent M for minutes, colon, percent S for seconds. And then we are going to assign all of this to a variable. Let's say local time and local time will be a string. So let's print our local time. And the current time is January 23rd, 2021, about 3 p.m. Oh, and I almost forgot, you can also get the UTC time. That is the coordinated universal time, if you know how that works. So if you need that, you would just use the GM time method for the UTC time, coordinated universal time. Okay, next up we have the STRP time function. And this function will parse a string representation of a time and or date and return a time object. So we need to pass in a string representing the date and or time as well as a format string. So let's create a time string and this variable is going to be a string representation of a date. Let's say 20th of April, 2020. And what we can do is take this string representation of a time and or date and parse it to a time object. So we're going to pass in our time string variable as well as a format string. So let's say I would like to parse the day. So that would be percent D for day, then percent B for name of the month, and then comma percent Y for year. This function will create a time object. So let's assign that to a variable time object equals time dot strp time. We're passing in our string representation of a time or date as well as a format string and we can print our time object using a print statement. However, this is going to be in a form that is somewhat difficult to read, but you can see at least we have a time object with all of these keywords filled in with anything that we passed in via these format directives that we have. Now the next function is the ASC time function, and this function accepts a time object or a tuple representation of a relative time. So this time let's create a time tuple. And we're going to follow this order. We can pass in up to nine values. The first value is a year. So let's pass in perhaps 2020, a month, let's say four, a day, how about 20, four hours, let's say four minutes, 20 and seconds, maybe zero. Let me just fix some of the spacing here. Okay, you can also pass in a number day of the week. Um, I'm just going to say zero. I don't think it's really that important a day of the year, zero and negative one or zero for daylight savings time. So we created a time tuple and we can pass in a time object or a tuple representation of a time following this formula. So let's pass in our time tuple and this will create a time string, a string representation of the time that we create. And let's print our time string. And we should have April 20th, about four in the morning, the year 2020. So that is ASC time. It will convert a tuple representation of a time and date 
or a time object and convert it to a readable string. Now another option is to use mktime, and mktime will take a tuple representation of a time or a time object and convert it to seconds since epic. So April 20th of the year 2020 is about 1.5 billion seconds since our epic date, and for me that was December 31st, the year 1969. So that is a few useful functions of the time module. If you would like a copy of this code, I will post all of this to the comment section down below. And well, yeah, that's the time module in Python. Hey you, yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learned something new, then help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.